Good morning, everyone. Morning, students. So here we are. Uh, good morning, those who have just trained. We are in for what we call calf sketch. And we are going to sketch what we call rational. Rational functions. We are going to take some brief notes on what happens or what we need. Sketch these rational functions as we are going to see what exactly happens when someone wants to sketch rational function. Now, rational functions are going to talk about curves which is a curve of the form y is equal to f of x out of d of x is said to be rational whereby f of x and g of x are functions of x and the curve y is equal to f of x out of g of x can be sketched using the following using the following procedure. In the following procedures. Now, among the procedure we are supposed to use is what we discussed last week, eh? which is the region where we were finding solutions to inequalities. But today we have to talk about some other items. For example, one, we should determine where where the curve crosses the coordinate axis. Coordinate axis, i.e. x and y intercepts. And if you recall, a curve meets the x axis at y is equal to zero. And then also the curve meets the y axis at x is zero. So these notes, we need to have them in mind. Then the second procedure, we need to determine the turning points. Okay. And in turning points, I assume you are experts in finding the turning points of the curve. And to find the turning points of the curve, you can use 
like depreciation. the function and equating it to zero. Then also, here we should also note, we investigate the nature of the car, whether nature of the curve, nature of the turning point, sorry, nature of the turning points, whether maximum or minimum. or inflection. Then three, the new item here, which you don't know, this is why sometimes I call this advanced cup sketching, determine the asymptotes. The asymptotes of the curve. If any, and an asymptote is a straight line that meets the curve at infinity. infinity and we normally sketch them using dotted lines. Then for determine the regions where a curve does not exist. Spelling of X is it? Is it X? What is the spelling of X is it? Where the cup does not pass, let us just say where the cup does not pass. But ideally, we are meaning that where the cup does not exist. That one has a question. Uh, teacher, remember we did the cup sketching with Mr. JB. I have an easy formula for stating, for starting cup sketching. Uh, I think you did the first cup sketch. Did you do asymptotes? No. Yeah. I told you that this, this is backhouse two. The other one is back house one. Eh? So this is sometimes like I've said, we call it advanced curve sketching. The curve sketching you have is either for section A or section B mixed with an item. But this one, they can set the number in section B and say, sketch the curve only, 12 marks. And here there is also what we call, the good thing Opio has answered the person who was talking in the chat, that my friend, this is advanced. Yeah, this is advanced curve sketching. There are two types. There is that one which you are calling a rational function. We shall come to what we call an oblique curve, a curve which has a slanting asymptote. I bet you've ever talked about that. Okay. Uh, also note, there are two types of asymptotes. Namely, actually there are three. Uh, okay, let us first talk about these two. Particle asymptotes
uh, whereby this vertical symptom, this is determined or obtained by equating the denominator to zero. of a given function. Iggy, if you have y is equal to x plus one out of x plus two of x plus three, we're going to use as, this as our reference example. Then I equate this denominator to zero. When you equate the denominator to zero, you'll have x plus two and x plus three is zero. So the vertical asymptotes are at x is negative two and x is equal to negative three. So that is how we get vertical asymptotes. We get them by equating the denominator to zero. Okay, and this is attained as y tends to infinity. Because we draw those lines standing on x is negative two and x is equal to negative three. So those vertical lines are parallel to the y axis. So as you proceed towards those lines, the curve goes to infinity. So those ones are called vertical asymptotes. Have people taken the screenshot for these notes? You need these notes, whether you like it or not. Because when I start doing numbers, we are going to do numbers for like three lessons today, next week, and one more week. Then we shall have put it down. Okay. Then the second one, Roman two, horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes. Now, in these second ones, to obtain horizontal asymptotes. There are two methods. There are two methods. One, divide the right hand side by the highest degree of X. X top and bottom of each term. And then then set x to infinity, e.g. you have y is equal to maybe x minus one out of x squared minus six. The highest degree of x we see there is x squared. So the right hand side you divide everything by the highest degree of x. See that? every term by the highest degree of x. I will lose one x here, I remain with one there. I will lose both of them here, I remain with a single one. My y becomes one out of x minus one out of x squared divided by one minus six out of x squared. After you have done so, then bring the limits as x tends to infinity. So in the limit, as x tends to infinity of y, then this is going to be equal to the limit as x tends to infinity of one out of x minus one out of x squared 
divided by one minus six out of x squared. When you substitute infinity, this becomes one out of infinity minus one out of infinity out of one minus six out of infinity square. Yeah, you enjoy the song, infinity, infinity. Now here we are. We are in infinity mathematically. So whoever enjoys the song, tell them to stop singing if they do not know what the meaning of the word infinity means. Ideally, infinity is one over zero. And likewise, one over zero is infinity. So one over infinity is zero and one over infinity is, I mean, one over zero is infinity and likewise one over infinity is zero. Therefore, our y tends to one out of, uh, tends to zero minus zero all over one minus zero. So y tends to zero as x tends to infinity. So y is zero becomes what we call the horizontal asymptotes. That is method one. More of these will be enjoyed when we see examples. Right now, because we're just looking at definitions, they might look a, look a little bit you know, interesting. But I have method two. Method two, let me call it start two. You cross multiply cross multiply the denominator and equate the coefficient and equate the coefficient on the highest degree of x to 0. I normally have to teach the first method and then I teach this one. If I teach this one, no, it's no student will ever go for the first one. But if I teach the first one and people get the first one, some of you get the first one, if you have not enjoyed it, you've not liked it, then you end up concentrating on the second one. So we had y is equal to x minus one over x squared minus six. When you cross multiply, you get y of x squared minus six y is equal to x minus one. You will get y of x squared minus x um, um, plus one minus six y. So you design a quadratic in x. Now the quadratic in x has this x squared having a coefficient of y. The, the coefficient on x squared, which is the highest degree of x is y. Therefore, you equate that coefficient to zero. So if our coefficient is zero, then y is equal to zero is the horizontal asymptotes. I think people are now smiling. So Elizabeth, have you covered this? You are saying you covered this curve. Hmm? Are we still there? Guys, no one is saying anything. Are you trying to tell me that you are getting the definitions right on point? Yeah? So pardon that one. Pardon on there? On that, on that one. On the what? That one which I suggested. On the second one. I, I, yes. The second one, just do cross multiplication here. And the cross multiply. Yeah? When you cross multiply, y multiplies x squared. You get y x squared. Y multiplies the six, you get minus six Y is equal to X minus one. Yeah, Y one multiplies the X and uh, one multiplies the one. Then you design a quadratic in X squared. So the coefficient on X squared is always the horizontal asymptotes. Hmm? Then thirdly, someone has a chart, yes, please. Sir, so please, may I take screenshots for the first page? <laughs> At first, you are not taking screenshots. Okay. Here you go. Please write down these notes and read them. 
There's a reason why you, I really write notes when I'm so teaching, but you see, I've labored to write for over 20 minutes. I'm writing notes. They are not for me, they are yours. The third asymptote is what we call the slanting asymptote. This one is a bloody one. Hmm? Slanting, sometimes you call it oblique asymptotes. How, how is it brought about? It occurs when the highest degree of X in the numerator is greater than the highest degree of X in the denominator. And is attained by long division. And equating the quotient to y. So you divide the numerator and the denominator of the function by long division, then the quotient you attain is the slanting asymptotes. So x plus one bracket 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 of x minus three bracket divided by x plus two bracket. So these are the kinds of curves we are talking about which are oblique. Yeah. It can even be like this, y is equal to x two squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. Clearly, you see the highest, the highest value of x in the numerator is x squared, greater than the lowest value in the denominator, highest value in the denominator. So it means this is an improper fraction. Yeah. So for improper fractions, they bring about what we call oblique or oblique curves which oblique curves have oblique asymptotes or slanting what? Asymptotes. So to get those slanting asymptotes, we divide the numerator by the denominator by long division. So let me try out this example I've shown. Screenshot. Then the other thing, we expect you to know how to expand to square. I mean, to expand in terms of uh, factorizing and uh, you can be in position to factorize and even to expand. So we expect you to be knowing that. So given our curve, given y is equal to x plus one, x minus three out of x plus two, find the slanting asymptotes. So when you expand this, you get y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3, all divided by x plus 2. So x parts of long division, where are you? This is x plus 2. Then you'll have x squared minus 2x minus 3. So when we divide, this is how, what we are going to come up with. minus 2x minus 3. When you divide, you get x, then you get x squared plus 2x. When you subtract, we realize a negativity of 4x minus 3. Subtract uh, division again calls for a minus 4, and we shall attain uh, a minus 4x plus minus 8. When you subtract, we'll have a remainder of so you divide until you attain the remainder. Now, this quotient you have up here is what we equate to y. Therefore, y is equal to x minus 4 is an equation of a line, which line we are calling the slanting asymptotes.
Hmm? Now, whenever we have a slanting asymptote, there is no horizontal asymptote. We should have that in mind. Note, if we have a slanting asymptote, we may not have a horizontal asymptote. Another one, if the curve crosses the asymptote, then the asymptote is weak. at that point and is strong elsewhere. If the curve is to cross an asymptote, it may cross it once, but where it has crossed it, we conclude and say the, screen, the asymptote is weak at that point. Elsewhere, the asymptote is strong because the curve cannot penetrate it. Okay? Someone says, teacher, page before, we are on page three, we are going to page four, writing notes. But we, have, we are done, we are ready for an exam. Uh, I also mentioned that we have to find where the curve passes and where it does not pass. Um, on this very note, The method of cross multiplication is very vital since it can be used to determine the following. One horizontal asymptote. Two, we can use it to determine the turning points. Three, we can use to determine the nature of the turning points. Four, we can use it to determine where the curve does not pass along the y-axis. Yet all these ones have to be found individually. But because of this technique of cross multiplication, all this can be summarized. They can be found at once. And uh, with that sense, for example, I have uh, there's also another thing. If the curve has no turning points, then B squared is less than 4SC. I don't want us to use the other. Then B squared is not greater than 4SC. That one will confuse you. 
just use that definition of B squared is less than 4AC. That will show that the curve has no turning point. Okay. Uh, then also the other one is, um, which I wanted to show you is uh, not, you have y is equal to, let me see, y is equal to, x squared plus 2x minus 3 out of x squared minus x plus 1. When you cross multiply, you realize y of x squared eh? Let me assume this is okay, three. Let me have this one as two. Then we shall have two y x squared minus y x plus y is equal to x squared plus two x minus three. When you collect like terms, you will have 2y minus 1 of x squared minus 2 plus y of x plus y plus 3 is equal to 0. This is our quadratic in x. And I told you when, you, when, you are, when you're using this technique, it can give you all these four. So first, you can equate the highest degree to 0. The coefficient of the highest degree to 0 which is 2y minus 1 is 0, and you'll get y is a half as your horizontal what? As your horizontal asymptote. Then you'll also have to investigate. For real roots, b squared is greater than or equal to 4sc. So b squared should be greater than 4sc, which is 2 plus y squared should be greater than four uh, but in case you want to investigate where the curve does not pass eh, then you say it should be less than straight away like i've mentioned up there so b squared should be less than four ac for the curve where it doesn't pass so the four will be multiplying the y plus three and you'll be multiplying the two y minus one and we expand this shall have two plus y squared is less than four into y plus three and two y minus one, two y minus one and y plus three. When you simplify, you get four plus four y plus y squared is less than four into two y plus six y minus y minus three. So four plus four y squared, y squared is less than eight y plus twenty four. It's a squared. Eh? Plus twenty y. First y is squared. Oh, this one. Eh? Thank you. Uh, minus trade off. So algebra is very important. Like you've seen, this person who has given me the correction. So we can have uh, eight. Okay, we can have zero is less than seven y squared plus 16 y minus 16. This is the same as saying a negative seven y squared minus 16 y plus 16 is less than zero. Someone, can someone factorize this? Give me the answers, even if they're in decimals. Using a high to date. So could you go back to the previous page? Mm -hmm. Could so you go back to the previous page? Pardon? Could you go back to the previous page? Okay.
Thank you, sir. Has someone got these answers? Oh, it's a complex. It's not. Because A is negative. So definitely B squared is better than for S. Negative. Three point. Zero three. Point zero three eight. Zero three. Another one. Zero point seven five. What's the event? Yes. Zero point seven five is less than zero. Then you get critical points. You remember critical points last week? Y is negative 3.03. Y is equal to 0 0.752. 0.752. Okay. Then you go ahead and investigate. Uh, remember how to investigate? Y is less than negative 3.03. Negative 3.03 .03, less than y less than 0 0.75. Then y is greater than 0 0.75. Then here y minus 0 0.75, 3, 2. Then here y plus 3.03. .03. Then lastly down here we have sign of what? Sign of y. Uh huh. Less than you get a negative, you get a negative, positive. Between the two zero, negative, positive, negative. Beyond, positive, positive, positive. The equation wanted us to get a negative. So the region where the curve does not exist along y is between negative 0 0.3, less than y, less than 0 0.75. Sometimes they can even ask you to show that the curve does not exist in those regions. Now, why do I want to give you this region? This region means this. If this is the axis of X and Y, where Y is 0 0.75 and where Y is negative 3.03, .03, the curve does not pass through that region. So we can shade that region vigorously and demarcate that the curve can never think of passing here. And that is why I told you this method can give you very many answers. It has showed us where the curve does not exist. It has showed us the horizontal asymptote. Now look at the next item. When the curve comes from up this way, it is going to turn minimum. When the curve comes from down this way, it is going to turn maximum. So this is the y ordinate for the maximum point, turning point. This is the x coordinate, I mean y ordinate for the minimum turning point. So if you want to get the turning points, turning points, you already have x1, you don't know it, but you have y1 at 0 0.75. Then you have another one, x2, you don't know it, but you have zero, negative 3.03. So with that reason, we can now go to our function. What is our function? Our function was given by y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by 2x squared minus x plus one. So you bring in these values of y and drop them there. When you drop them there, you will find the corresponding x values. Okay, it is quite long, I can't do it now, uh, but um, as we do a numbers, we shall do numbers, I'll bring in all these methods. I'll merge all these measure, methods, show you how all these methods can be utilized, okay?
Otherwise, all the definitions for the advanced calf sketching technique are done. And we are ready for the next three lessons to sketch calves. Three or four lessons. So almost a month, we are sketching a calf so that we all become perfect. It is a very simple number, but never try this number as number one. It is very easy to score marks on it. People only go wrong mainly on the last part, the sketch, which is two marks, but never worry. But if whatever we need, like nature of the curve, region where the curve has passed, you show it on the graph, all the marks are transferred there and they're given to you. So no worries. So it's a very simple number, but always do it as number last if you're to do the curve by all means. Just know you can't get zero on a curve unless you never attended the class. The minimum you can get is six marks. Hmm? Okay, so can we start numbers? Do you need any screenshot if I can start numbers? Okay, let's go for numbers. Those are five, four pages of definitions. So please enjoy the definitions and understand the examples. One, sketch the curve. Sketch the curve, y is equal to x minus two out of x plus three. Now, when the question is just like that, sketch the curve, 12 marks, do everything you can find on that curve. There are some situations where the question says, show that the curve does not exist in this region. Hence, determine the turning points and their nature. Hence, sketch the curve. There you summarize by cross multiplication. Okay. Yes, someone is in the chat. Why shouldn't we do it as a number one? Habiba, it's a long number. You see, since we began the lesson, I'm just giving you definitions. A number and pamvu new. So we have pamvu, it demoralizes students at one point. Negative astrology for now, 12 out of 12 in most cases. So I do not encourage people to go for it as number one. Why? You might do it as number one. You take over 30 minutes on the number. The curve is not moving how it's supposed to move. You have no turning points. You have no region where the curve does not pass. It shows you that the curve passes everywhere. You get confused with the entire paper. So to avoid that, in two hours, you'll be done. If you're a serious student, two hours a maximum are enough for paper one. For non-serious students, those are the students who work the paper up to three hours. But a student who has been on form, two hours you are done. So at one hour and 45 minutes, you can start your curve number and you enjoy your curve sketching because it's an enjoyable number. Okay, first thing. First, let us start with the intercepts. When x is zero, what is our y? Y is negative two out of three. We have got the first point. Ah. Bonus one, that is why I told you, no one can get a zero on this number unless you do not want to attend the class. That is primary work. Yeah? Primary, all level, book one, senior five. Now you're in senior six, you are advanced curve sketching. The second one, when y is zero, you will have zero is equal to x minus two out of x plus three. Cross multiplication, x is equal to two. So you have two zero, bonus one, two max. Are you seeing how interesting the curve is? Uh-huh. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please, if I can go ahead. Is it a must to show the working that cross multiplication? I'm teaching. So if I'm teaching, I have to show. But if we are working out in a paper, you just you just conclude and substitute. When you say y is zero, you can definitely get x is two. But according to what we have as a class, some people might have just joined in, they don't know what I'm doing. That's why I was showing. You. Okay. But for you, if you already say that y is zero, and then the other problem also comes in. We are going to meet quadratics. For you to just put the answer in a quadratic, you might have copied from someone. So for the quadratic, you show the method you're using to solve. Whether factorization or bulldozing. 
Okay. There I answered you, right? Yes, teacher, it's okay. Okay. Now let's go for turning points. This statement should be written for turning points. Dy dx should be equated to zero. Now get dy dx. You are experts in quotient rule, aren't you? If you are not, if you go back to back house one, you will attain one into x plus three minus x minus two times one divided by x plus three raised to the square and equate it to zero. So this will give us x plus three minus x plus two is zero. Then this will give me, am I getting x is zero? Eh? Yes, you see I'm getting zero, not? You see five is impossible to be equal to zero. So if it is impossible and all the x vamoosh one, it is evidence that the car has no turning points. So you have to put down that ready. statement and write it that the curve has no turning points. So I'll go slow to understand it. Yes, is someone saying something? Yes, I don't understand it. Pardon? Go slow. The turning point. Yeah. Do you know how to differentiate? Guys, I'm assuming all these ones you know. If you don't know, no, remind sir, me, I'll remind you. Yeah? Differentiating using quotient rule. Yeah? Whereby, if you have y is equal to u over v, dy dx is v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared. Is the method I'm using. Where this is the u, this is the v. Hmm? Hello. Don't worry. This is the fact. We are we have we have four meetings just to sketch cups. It is okay. It is okay not to understand the first part, but just keep track and ask if I answer well and good. See if you don't get it, you wait for the next number. So I've differentiated, and when I simplify that differentiation, it reduces to that case. Since we don't have any x remaining. The cup has no turning. So if the cup has no turning points, you are saved from finding the nature. So go for the next item, asymptotes. Method one, y is equal to x minus two out of x plus three. Divide the high by the highest degree of x Divide by the highest degree of x, you get x over x plus 3 over x. You get 1 minus 2 over x out of 1 plus 3 over x. In the limit, as x tends to infinity of y, this is going to be equal to the limit as x tends to infinity of 1 minus 2 over x out of 1 plus 3 out of x. This will give me one minus two out of infinity out of one plus three out of infinity. And the answer is one. So y is one is the horizontal what? Asymptotes. There's something I missed here. Screenshot this note. Where there is no evidence of the curve from calculations, we sketch a rectangular hyperbola. We are meeting the rectangular hyperbola in a conic section after the circle, after the, the parabola, after the ellipse, we shall finalize with the rectangular hyperbola. 
So have that scale, that note, please. I will show you on the sketch what I'm trying to mean. Uh, or people now, I know you don't want the asymptote thing. Cross multiply. When you cross multiply, you get yx plus 3y is equal to x minus 2. y minus 1 of x plus 3y plus 2 is 0. The highest degree of x is x equated to 0. Its coefficient, y minus 1 is 0. y is the horizontal symptoms. Are we happy? The girls, are you fine? Hmm? Guys, Master, are you okay? I've not understood the differentiation part. Yeah, I'm not hearing you people well. Why? Increase your volumes. Oh, well, mine is low. Hey, mine is low. Okay. Yes, what were you saying? So the differentiation part, I've not understood it. Please speak louder. Let me put on earphones. Today I'm not hearing well. I don't know what's my problem. Okay, okay, okay. Briefly, briefly, the earphones are here. Okay, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, can you ask your question? Hello. Hello. Someone who had a question. Um, from the I mean the last part, asymptotes. Asymptotes. Asymptot. 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 Asymptote. Yeah, yeah. So you want to know how I found the horizontal asymptote using which method? Method one or method two? This method, the same method you used. Second method one. Method one. This one is, is confusing. Whoever has a problem with method one, forget you've never seen it. Yeah? Whoever has a problem with method one, don't ever use it. Cross multiply, collect like terms of X equate the coefficient of the highest degree of x to zero. So what I did here, I cross multiply. I got x, y plus three y is equal to x minus two. I collected x together. This one came to this one. I got y minus one times x plus three y plus two. This is the highest degree of x in that equation. Equate so how did it get y minus one? Not Katia, but you. you have y x, not so. Are you seeing y x? Yes. Move the x on the right hand side to y x. What does it become? Y x minus x, not so. Yes. Factorize. Are we together? Ha, Takara, yeah. Okay, let me come again. Eh? Okay. Guys, I told you I need your skills of factorization and expansion. If you are not good, trouble is coming your way. More algebra is coming in all these advanced topics of pure math. When you cross multiply, you get y of x plus 3. The lady who was asking, are we fine with this? Yes. Can you enter the y into brackets? Give me, yes. the, uh, you read to me what you write. Yx minus, yes. yx plus mm -hmm. 3y mm -hmm. is equal, equal to, to x minus 2. For x like terms. Yx minus x plus mm -hmm. 3y minus plus 2. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yes. Factorize out for me x x into y minus one. Mm -hmm. So what is the highest degree of x here? Power one. What is the coefficient on it? Y minus one. Equate it to zero. The value of y you get is the horizontal symptoms. 
Happy? Very. Okay. Okay, this was a lousy example, but it's okay. Now let's find the region where the curve passes. We know we saw that it has no turning point, so we, there was no need to find the nature. So the only left thing now is to find uh, where the curve, regions where the curve exists and doesn't exist. So regions where the curve exists. We saw y was equal to x minus two out of x plus three, you see that? You make sure you factorize linear brackets all through, just like we did before in, in our inequalities. Then get critical points by equating each linear bracket to zero. X minus two is zero, X plus three is zero. But when you become experts, like someone said, we don't need to show this. You just show that you're a five-star student and say X is two, X is negative three. Then we investigate. X less than negative three, negative three less than X less than two. I think people here now are experts. If you don't know, you missed last week's lesson. Then you should visit my YouTube channel, sign of F of X. Before negativity, negativity, positivity. Between negativity, positivity, negativity. Beyond, Positivity, positivity, positivity. Now, listen to me here, students. Here we do not get a solution set. Uh -uh. You know what this means? This means the curve is positive along the y-axis between negative infinity and negative infinity. The curve is negative between negative three and the positive two. So it passes in only the region of the negative on the y-axis, meaning it passes down, does it pass up? The last one, it means the curve passes up where y is positive, does it pass down where y is negative, as I'm going to show you. Ah, the last step, sketch the curve. We are ready to sketch. Teacher, don't we find the vertical asymptote? The vertical symptoms. Uh, I never got it. Okay. Vertical asymptotes. Sorry, I missed it. We said we put the denominator to zero, not so. Definitely it is x plus three, okay, is equal to zero for the first time. I'll never do this again. X is negative with three. Is it vertical what? Is a vertical asymptote. Screenshot, let us sketch our curve. We are ready to sketch. Are we ready? Okay. We are ready to sketch the curve. Here we are. I, Y axis. My X Excuse me, axis. teacher. Yes, please. Pardon, pardon, teacher. On what? Uh, 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 when finding uh yeah. when finding the region uh mm -hmm. when do you use uh, this formula uh, uh b squared minus four ac yeah, i will show you uh, i will show you this this, you exa this example this formula, was not suitable this example was not suitable AC. this example was not suitable for that eh? i will show you with the other examples that will come okay. ahead okay okay Um, now all these, uh, all these, all these, all these, all these, these critical points, two, negative three, when you come here, you can sketch them with dotted lines. Then come here and identify also positive two. Are we still present? We had the horizontal asymptote at y is one. Uh, this one is better, we can sketch it with a line to strictly distinguish it from the rest. So 
so that I can say, you even locate that this is y is equal to one. There are symptoms, name them. The other symptom is x is equal to negative three. So say this is x is equal to negative. It is so that the examiner gets to know that you confirmed that these are the symptoms. Now, eyes open. No one should blink. Make sure your data is full. Can we shade off the regions where the curve does not pass? We have seen, if you look at our table, before negative three, the curve is positive on the y-axis. The y-axis is beyond this line. So the curve is passing in the positive. It is not passing in the negative. So we shade below the x-axis. Between yeah. that one. Hmm? Are you seeing that this is x is less than negative three? Are you seeing that yes. the sign of f of x is positive? f of x is y. It means the curve is passing only in the y axis where it is positive. The y axis is positive up this way. So don't shade there. Remember inequalities, we shade the unwanted region. Eh? So we are shading where we don't want. Now, let me shade the second one. Maybe you'll understand it better. Between negative 3 and 2, the curve passes where? In the negative, meaning it passes where? Mr. Who was asking, well, does it pass up or down? Where is the negative y? Is it below the x axis, above the x axis? To show me. The negative y is below, not so. That is where the curve is passing. So you shade it up here where the curve does not pass. Okay. Then lastly, let me ask a lady here. Uh, among my ladies, where are they? We have uh, Adinan. We have Aisha Abdallah. Aisha Abdallah, the last one shows you that the curve passes in the positive y axis, not so. Aisha, are you there? Yes, teacher. The curve is passing in the positive y. Where is the positive y? Is it above the x-axis, below the x-axis? Above the x. So where do we shade? Below. OK, thank you, below. So we shade here. Now, for those of us who are very good at cramming, eh, I have a shortcut for you. When you realize the first one is positive, you shade in the negative. So it is like a, this. If you have shaded here, we shade here, we shade there. If there are more, we shade here. If there are more, we shade there. So it goes with ziggy, zaga, ziggy, zaga, ziggy, zaga. If you get the same sign, the curve has not yet left that region. Remember inequality is what I told you. If the signs are repeated, positive, positive, negative, negative, we are still in the same what? The same region. So the grammars will be outbeaten. But those of us who are cramming, once you see the signs are alternating, positive, negative, positive, negative, then even the shadings, one is up, the other is down, the other is up, the other is down, the other is down, the other is up, like that. So finally, let's take a look at our curve. The curve has intercepts, where are they? Let me use blue. Those who recall, what intercepts did we get? Intercepts were two zero and negative two out of three. Negative two out of three can be anywhere here. This is called curve sketching. Two zero is here. Curve sketching means you don't need to use a ruler, but sketch as long as the Values are appropriate. Negative three years on the left, followed by zero, followed by two, that is appropriate. As long as they're appropriate, it is curve sketching, it is a sketch. Now, this is a vertical asymptote, if you recall. I told you the curve meets the vertical asymptote at infinity. So it continues going, then it comes and turns through here. Then it comes and turns through here. 
It may not be a straight line, but as long as it is logically showing that the curve has come. Now, do you know what happens? This curve comes and emits a horizontal asymptote. So it goes to infinity. That way, and it finishes the earth and it comes back from this way along the same axis. If the asymptote takes the curve to infinity, it is the same asymptote which brings it back, but on the opposite side. What do I mean? When it goes, if this asymptote was to make it parallel to infinity with this y is equal to one, yeah? It is this same y is equal to one that is going to bring it back, but it will bring it back from the opposite side. This way it was below y is one, this way it comes back with y is one. When it comes back with y is one, it comes and meets this asymptote. When it meets this asymptote, it turns like a rectangular hyperbola and goes back to infinity. Then this x is equal to negative three was an asymptote which was vertical. So it takes it up. But as it takes it up, it is the same line which will bring it from down. So it brings it back from down on the opposite side, like I showed you here. Then it continues, goes to infinity, comes back, goes up, comes from down, it is continuous. I'm sorry, this time around, I can't demonstrate the continuity using the screen, but if we are on a blackboard, this would be very interesting. I'll try to do a, a small video uh, on my whiteboard and I show you what I'm trying to mean. So this is the sketch of our curve. If you had not seen that does not pass here, now this is what I called the rectangular hyperbola, that where there is no evidence, because there was no evidence in the calculations of this part, but these ones, we saw the turning points, we saw the intercepts, we saw this intercept, we saw it was asymptotic here, we saw it was asymptotic there, but here we know it is asymptotic to this one and that one, but we never had the shape. So you sketch there a rectangular hyperbola. That is example one. Welcome to curve sketching. Questions? Why or you want another curve? Straight away. Now will time be enough. As you can see, we have only done one kind of number with the definitions. So the second number also we can do it if you allow me. But hi, economics will kill us today. Because the time will not be enough. I trust the number is low. But we can try. So do that very fast screenshot. And then I take you to the second number very fast, guys. Uh, Ah, how come people have no questions? Don't worry, here the answer is, this is A2, maximum max. So all the other parts, people can learn how to get them. So you can get 10 out of 12 parts. Hmm? Teacher, we label the curve. Like how? Are we supposed to label it? Like y is equal to x plus one, x plus two. Okay, yes. you, okay, you can if you want to make the curve look beautiful and say, okay, this is my y is equal to x plus three. Was it x plus three out of x minus two? And you can label, but that is not so sensitive now. The shape, fact that the shape is like that, and what you've done there, we have seen, it is the curve you're talking about. This was actually x minus two. X minus two out of x plus three. Ali, question two, very fast. I'm going to take you a speedy speed here because now you know what I'm going to be doing. Sketch the curve, this one. I might not sketch, but you will try to sketch. That will answer them now for me. Then you will post for me the work in my inbox. Okay, I hope you've, you've finished screenshotting the first exam. Is there anyone who has not yet? Everything that we have talked about. I want us to go through this one very fast. Hmm? Intercepts, you are now experts. When X is zero, don't waste time. Y is going to be three out of four. The point is zero 
three out of four. Because you put here zero, you get three, you get negative one, you get negative four. So you get negative three out of negative four. Then when y is zero, it is the numerator which is zero. So x plus three and x minus one is zero. The other friend of mine who asked for the working, I have showed the working. If it was a quadratic, I have showed that I'm factorized. So I can conclude that x is negative three and x is one. So giving me negative three zero and one zero. Intercepts quick turning points. Turning points, those who did not see how we differentiated in the first example, dy dx has to be equal to zero. Therefore, I differentiate the numerator. If I expand the numerator, this curve should have been like this. Y is equal to, uh, if someone was to expand, eh, this should have been x squared plus two x minus three divided by, x squared minus four. So differentiate the numerator, you get two x plus two times the denominator minus two x into uh, x squared plus two x minus three, all divided by the denominator squared. Never waste time on the denominator, just equate the numerator to zero which gives us two x cubed minus four x squared minus four x plus two x squared minus eight minus two x cubed uh, minus four x squared plus six x. We lose this with this one. Uh, we shall have a negative two x squared. Hmm? plus 2x minus 8 is 0. We shall get x squared minus x plus 4 is equal to 0. Check. The one who was asking me last time, when do you test, when do you investigate? When you differentiate and get a quadratic like this one, before you solve it, just investigate. Sometimes the question is, show that the curve has no turning points. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. Is it supposed to be minus 8x? Can't have divided by 2. Uh, eh? Is that okay? No. Can't have divided here by 2, by 2, by 2, 4. By 2, this side. By... Not so. Chano, I'm She's saying. saying the... Up was there because it had to be two x. the first one. This is negative four x plus two x. The four give us this one, this one, and this one. It is supposed to be two x times negative four, giving us negative eight x. Two x times negative four, oh, giving us negative eight x here. Eh? Yes, teacher. Uh huh. So what does it give us? Teacher, not there. We are here. Yeah. After the first two x cubed, it is supposed to. You have confused me. Let me go again. Let us try again, okay? The first one is. 2x cubed, did we agree? Hmm? Yes, yes. Minus 8x, do we agree? Yes. Plus 2x squared, true? Sure. Minus 8, sure? Minus yes. 2x cubed, okay? Minus 4x squared, do we agree? Plus 6x. I think it's what I, I missed the eight. Eh? Yeah. So 
So this is 6x minus 8 you get. This one has been lost. Negative 2x squared minus 2x minus 8. You are right. So 2, I get x squared plus x plus 8 is 0. I was telling you that if they ask you to show that it has no turning point, yes. just check. Is b squared less than 4sc? b squared is 1. Is it less the than? The plus 4. is supposed to be 4. The plus 4. Okay. Plus 4. Yes, has no turning points. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. I'm requesting, uh, I'm requesting you to repeat for me. Uh, my, network, my network was unstable. Repeat what? Uh, the, point of, uh, uh, the point of turning points. Turning uh, points, you just differentiate. You differentiate this one. Using quotient okay. rule and equate to zero. Eh? Though, this when you reach here, we, you just equate the numerator to zero. When you reach here on the quadratic, eh? I was emphasizing the following. If the question said, show that it has no turning points, just investigate is b squared less than 4sc? One is less than four times four times one. One is less than 16. Yes. Hence, it has no turning what? Points. But for some amateur students, you know what they do? They go ahead and use the quadratic formula. They waste time, they solve, they get complex roots. When you get complex roots, then you finally conclude and say, since this is on a real plane and we are getting complex roots, it is impossible. We don't have turning what? Points. But you as five-star students, you can investigate using B squared less than for SC. That is why I mentioned it in the notes. And I proceed. Time is flying. And teacher. Yes. And teacher, how, and teacher, how would you uh, how would you know that? Uh, uh, the function the function has no turning points. Can't you investigate this quadratic? The quadratic you deduce here after equating the derivative to zero. You equate the derivative to zero, but you equate the numerator because when you cross multiply, the denominator cancels to zero. Now, when you simplify, you get a quadratic always. If there is no quadratic, unless maybe it was linear, the numerator was linear and the denominator was linear. But if they are quadratic, you, you deduce a quadratic later. Now that quadratic is what you investigate. You can investigate it by substituting in a, in a bulldozer or quadratic equation and you get complex roots. And then you conclude that since they are complex roots, it has not any points. But I've told you for a five-star student, you just investigate. Is B squared less than 4SC? If yes, then it is impossible to have real roots. So when you investigate using B squared less than equal to 4C, less than 4SC, then you just conclude that it has no turning points, if it is true. Okay? Uh, because time is overflying, I'm uh, going to use this method for the asymptotes. Asymptotes, I'm not using method one. People cried, and yet we are having less time y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by x squared minus 4. y of x squared minus 4y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. y minus 1 of x squared minus 2x plus 3 minus 4y is 0 y is equal to one is the horizontal what? Asymptote. You write it in full in a paper, don't write HA like a me. For me, I'm assuming you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, then these are what? Horizontal. Horizontal asymptotes. How about vertical asymptotes? For vertical asymptotes, we equate the denominator to zero. Do you remember? X squared minus four is zero. Don't waste time, you're five star students. X is equal to negative two. X is equal to positive two. Hmm? So what is left is to test the region 
where the calf does not pass. Remember, we have x squared minus 4. We have x plus 3, x minus 1. Then we have sine of y. X is less than, x, x is less than what? Negative 3. Okay, but now when someone sees this eh, on critical points here, there is a problem. When you look at all these critical points after factorizing all of them, you have X minus one, X plus three out of X minus two, X plus two. Remember I told you to factorize everything. Yeah? So when you come here, you can say X minus one, hmm? I mean, x minus three, then you go to negative three, less than x, less than negative two, negative two, less than x, less than one, one less than x, less than two, then finally x beyond two. If you want, you can also split this one. But if you're a smart student, you should know that that comes from the multiplication of these two. So, so less than you get a something bigger than four, so you get a positivity. Less than you get a negativity, you get a negativity, the first one is a positive. Between negative three and negative two, you get something which is positive here. Actually, no, it's not positive. You pick a value, negative 2.5. When you square it and subtract, you get a positive. Then negative 2.5 gives you a positive. Negative 2.5 gives you a negative, you get a negative. Zero, negative, positive, positive, negative. You get a positivity. Between one and two, positive 1.5. 1.5 will give us a negative. A positive, a positive, reducing a negative. Lastly, beyond two, positivity, 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 positivity. So having confirmed these positives, I don't know what economics will say today. We are ready to sketch the curve. First and foremost, what were the critical points we had? Negative three, we had negative two, we had positive one, we had positive two. Uh, these are our regions. These are our regions. Okay, this one is coming this way. This one is coming this way. You have to label the axis. Uh huh. Uh, who can tell me? Shakira, the first one before negative three, where should I shade? Up or down? Hey, we also had a horizontal sip tote. Eh? The horizontal sip tote was y is one. Eh? Why is one is the horizontal asymptote? So I can have it here with a different, with a different line. I told you the curve can sometimes penetrate the asymptote. You have to investigate by the way and see whether it can penetrate it. But we shall see even, if, even when you're sketching, you can find out that. Uh, I was asking Shakira to tell me where to shade. Do I shade up or down before negative three? As it is a negative, I mean a positive. Agaba Benjamin, where do we shade? The curve is passing through the positive y. Do we shade below the x-axis, above the x-axis? 
below the x axis thank you so much uh who is there adinan where do we shade next above or below above yeah gram work now can work zigzag uh then aisha abdala i don't know whether she's a present steven mugera where do i shade next down or up down down yep. steven mugera we shade where up then last we shade where down uh okay do you remember the intercepts guys intercepts we had 3 0 3 over 4 where is it this one is y is 1 eh? Eh? the horizontal asymptote was y is 1 so 3 over 4 is here then another one another intercept was at negative three zero and one zero negative three is here what is here this is our y is one horizontal symptoms the vertical symptoms were x is negative two and x is positive two so this is an asymptote x is negative two meaning the curve because it can't pass this way, it must be coming from this side. So the curve is coming from this way, from that asymptote. But as it comes, eh, there is a point of contact here. It passes through that point of contact. As it goes up, it meets asymptote. Takes it on my left, but it has to come back from my right, but up because this way it passed down. If you see me here in the image, eh? this way it has gone on my left, passing below. When it is coming back, it comes back with the same line, but up. So it comes back this way. It comes back through here. Uh, it comes back through here. And then goes up to infinity. So it comes like a rectangular what? hyperbola. Okay. So after it has come like a rectangular hyperbola, uh, we have seen it has come like this. From that way, then this same line takes it up. Then it brings it back from down, but on the opposite side, it has brought it back. You see that? When it brings it back, it comes and turns through here. Though there is no clear turning whether it's maximum or inflection. So it, you just sketch it's passing through. When it comes, it passes through this intercept. Now, because this whole region, the curve is passing through there. This curve is passing through the asymptote somewhere around here. We can investigate this part where Y is one. There is a value of X we did check where the asymptote is weak and we have managed to pass through it. Then it goes back to infinity. Up here, it goes to infinity, then it is brought back by the same line, then it comes back, then it continues. That is how the curve looks like. I think economics, they're already attending mathematics. So Mr. Kamagamba doesn't say the word, why is there? Any questions, guys, if I can babush very fast. Remember to go through the entire work. This one I've rushed you a little. Next time I'll also do some more. If possible, we shall do two or three cups. So get your name question bank. Get out all the questions on cup sketching. All of them, post them on the group. It's better I come and try out some of those questions you posted. Then go to backhouse too, where we were last time. The next item is cup sketching. Start doing the numbers. Even if you have not sketched, find everything we require to find find the asymptote turning points blah 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 find everything when i come when you have a challenge that's where i can start from always and be of help to see that you can always match and find whatever we need
Any questions? No questions? People should take the screenshot. Somebody, Teacher. Yes, please. Teacher, is the work for inequalities on your YouTube channel? <clears throat> oh, I, yeah, I think if I didn't post, I'm going to post right now. Let me head to Namsusa. The next 30 or one hour, I'll be there, then I'll be posting. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Kale, you can have a good day, Thanks. guys. Anytime.